Well, I didn't get it. I mean, I just saw this woman with these great costumes <laughs> sashaying around the stage. I didn't get the story. But I was a kid, you know, I was like 14 or something, maybe, maybe younger. And then I saw it again with uh, Pearl Bailey on Broadway, my senior year in college. And I loved it as an entertainment, but I still didn't get the story. I mean, I was a slow learner. <laughs> it took me a while to grow up, but that's my excuse. Um, but then when I saw the show um, a year and a half ago on Broadway, right before the Tony Awards with Bette Midler, this glorious production directed by Jerry Zaks and choreographed by Warren Carlyle and designed by Sandra LaQuasto, the sets and costumes and the lighting designer Natasha Katz. I, um, and Jerry Zaks is a genius director and the storytelling was illuminated for me for the first time. And I was like, this is amazing, you know, and I was so moved by the collaborative um, work of these master artists in telling this beautiful story of hope and coming back to the world of the living and love and um, joy. And I was literally standing at the end of the show with the rest of the audience crying like everybody else around me. And I turned to my brother, Norman Buckley, who's a director, who was with me and my friends and said, this is the greatest piece of musical theater I've ever seen. And he, he was laughing at me and he goes, you say that? I said, no, I'm serious. This is what musical theater is supposed to be all about. And I was deeply touched by it. That's such a difficult question. You know, I mean, I went to acting school for years and years and years and studied with some of the greatest acting teachers out there, from Stella Adler to you know uh, people at the Actors Studio. And um, I mean, I've studied all my, all my life to learn how to do this better. And I've also studied with some of the greatest voice teachers in the business. So you know, it's a whole process. I mean, I went back to. The source material, which is The Matchmaker by Thornton Wilder, who's one of my favorite playwrights. Uh, the first play I ever did in college was Skin of Our Teeth. I played Mrs. Atrevis. And I remember being so uh, moved by the monologue. I got to speak as Mrs. Atrevis. That was you know, Thornton Wilder's words and about feminism and um, women's value. And I was feeling that anyway as a college student, you know, and I was a charter subscriber to Ms. Magazine. And, you know, there was like words for my feelings. Um, and so, you know, he's a, a beautiful uh, American playwright. And um, so I went back to study The Matchmaker and noticed that the libretto, uh, the ad adaptation of the this script, um, our libretto in Hello, Dolly, by Michael Stewart is exactly from the play. And so the story and then who that woman is and. Um, what she's gone through and how the past 10 years as a widow, she's retired from this life that her husband, Ephraim Levi, inspired, which is, she says this beautiful thing in the play. She says, um, my husband, uh, Ephraim Levi, believed in life, any place you could find it, in cafes, in ballrooms, even in theaters. And every Saturday night, even when times were bad, like clockwork, down those stairs at the Harmonia Gardens, we came, Ephraim and me, and they went dancing, they won these you know, stories for their dancing as a couple. And her husband, um, obviously, was a source of great joy and inspiration for her. And without him, she's retired pretty much from that and is just making a living catch as catch can, you know, like teaching guitar and mandolin lessons or doing short distance hauling or, um, you know, um, repairing surgical corsets, reboning surgical corsets or piercing ears or pierce ears replugged. She does everything, you know, to make a living and she's tired of that. And um, Horace Vandegelder and his wife, he's a widower, and his wife, they kind of partied together in the olden days. And so she knows Horace Vandegelder as a different, younger person, but now he's become this man that's all crusty and is only about his money, and um, you know he's not living life fully either. So she's she's been hired as a matchmaker uh, for him. He now wants a younger wife who can clean the house and stuff like that. You know he he represents in so many ways um, some of the worst of the patriarchy. You know that's just committed to making money their god. And she even has this brilliant monologue at the end, money, 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 Mr. Van de Gelder's money. 
it's I love that monologue. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful, straight out of Thornton Wilder. And um, she's decided that he's making foolish choices, thinking he's going to find this young wife that's uh, going to be the solution to his life. And so she, she decides, I'm going to be that person. I'll make him a good wife. And even though it's not the kind of marriage that Ephraim and I had, I'm tired of make, you know, living from hand to mouth. She states that at the beginning of the play. And then she goes about in, in this like keenly talented and intuitive way she has of putting people together, the right couples, and then trying to bring Horace Vandegelder back to a conscious awareness of the value of life and hope and love. And much to her surprise, I think she's as amazed as everybody is at the end of the play. She manages that, you know, and um, she's, a, she's just such a great being and she's dedicated to joy and hope and she's gone through heartache and loss and decided to come back to the world. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice. It's been a really good, 2018 was a pretty great year. I started the year with this, you know, being up for this role in Preacher, and I'm a huge Preacher fan. I watched season one and season two, and I'm a complete devotee of that show. I just think it's brilliant, and it's, you know, social uh, and religious satire. It's just brilliant, and it's written, you know, the showrunner is Sam Catlin, who wrote Breaking Bad, he and his writing team, and and it stars Dominique Cooper and Ruth Nega, who are two of my favorite actor, actors, and Joseph Gilgan, who's amazing. And the production values are just fantastic. And so I was this fan, and my agent called me and said, there's this role of this evil Cajun sorceress that's the grandmother to Dominique Cooper's character. And um, they're interested in you for that. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, So I did a little test for them, and I got the part. I was so excited. And so I flew to... New Orleans to start work and a week later my agent called with the offer for Hello Dolly and I was like boy this is amazing you know because it's like from dark to light you know in the same year it's a, it's kind of an act for me as an actor it's kind of a dreamy year of playing characters two really strong characters at opposite ends of the spectrum of humanity and um, so that's been really fun. Well, I saw my first piece of musical theater when I was 11, and I'd studied dance with my aunt, who was a, a professional dancer and a dance teacher. I studied with her from the time I was three, and my mother had been a singer-dancer. So she took me, and she had this extensive record collection of cast albums and great lady singers that I played all the time. And then she took me to see Pajama Game at our local theater, Casa Mignana, and it was the, with the original Bob Fosse choreography. And I was smitten. I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And then I had this awareness that kind of rose up through my spine and kind of this consciousness that looked back at me and said, that, that's what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. And I was like, what? And then I realized it was the musical theater. And then the guys that um, choreographed and uh, the lead dancer of that show were a wonderful couple named Ed Holloman and Larry Howard. And they decided they were tired of touring and they toured for Fosse and stuff. So they settled in Fort Worth and opened a school. So I came home from junior high one day and told my mother I wanted to learn Steam Heat from Pajama Game. And so we went to them as teachers and they took me on and they were my mentors and taught me the original Bob Fosse choreography and everything. So from age 11, I've been doing this. And that was my first experience of doing the 11 o'clock number because I was on right before the senior girls can-can line in the junior high talent show and had my first experience of an audience being kind of <laughs> gobsmacked by this little person with this big voice, you know. And um, then I became a professional uh, performer at 15. I was played Dainty June and danced in West Side Story, and then I did a whole fleet of characters in the musical, the Ado Annie, Maisie and the Boyfriend, um, Meg and Brigadoon, all kinds of parts. And I was signed by uh, an agent when I was a junior in college, and on my first day in New York, uh, he sent me in an audition for 1776, the musical, and I got the role of Martha Jefferson um, my first day in New York City, which was really kismet, you know, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, who gets that on their first day? Well, I was pretty well trained and, you know, and had a lot of experience because I was a professional from age 15. But yeah, it was amazing, an amazing gift. And uh, from there, I just kept working, thankfully. I moved home the year 
after 9-11, uh, I just had felt this calling to be with horses. And I, my dream had always been to uh, have a ranch and to ride cutting horses. And I wanted to be successful in show business so I could do that. But I kind of forgot to do that because I was always just busy working, working, practicing, 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 working, working, being ready for the next job opportunity. And after 9-11, I was like, who knows how much time any of us have. You need to remember your dreams. What was it you wanted to do is ride horses, live with horses. So I set about the, on this quest, finding my first cutting horse, which is this sport, um, the only equine sport where the horse has to think for himself. And they're brilliant, beautiful, gifted ath athletes. And I fortunately connected with the top trainer in the sport. He'd won more money than anybody in this sport of cutting. And he took me on as a student at age 55 and said I wasn't too old to learn this because I'd ridden as a child and shown horses when I was a kid and in junior horse shows and rodeos and stuff. And so I became this like ardent, passionate student of this brilliant uh, cutting horse trainer, Bill Freeman. He helped me find my first horse who was, my first cutting horse who was a champion named Purple Badger. And then I was commuting for a while the first year trying to do that and Badger was living at his ranch. And, then I was, one day I had this epiphany, he said, you need to live where your horse lives. So I sold my apartment and moved to this beautiful ranch, like an hour west of Fort Worth, and changed my life. And it was the best thing I've ever done for myself. Fortunately, they're putting me in really nice places, and they're letting us travel my, my dogs. Um, between my assistant, Kathy, and I, I we're traveling. I have a, a German Shepherd Malinois dog and two Shih Tzus, and she has a Shepherd lab mix that she adopted and so between us uh, we have four dogs uh, that we're traveling and that feels like home they their presence makes us feel like we've got a continuity um, we had three weeks off at Christmas so I got to go home and see my horses and cats and things but uh, unfortunately they're in good hands with my ranch worker uh, back at home but yeah it's it's they're beautiful hotels where we're staying and um, they're taking really good care of us, but yeah, I miss home. I miss my horses, and it was a, a real grace to be home for Christmas. Well, she was a singular icon, and as one of our cast members said last night in a post that they put on Instagram, none of us would be here if it weren't for Carol Channing. None of us would be doing this tour, and you know, her stamp on Hello Dolly, she did over 5,000 performances, the first Broadway run the, uh, for a number of years, the first national tour, the second national tour, 5,000 performances. And um, as I was talking to you about, you know, she made Hello Dolly her cottage industry, you know. Um, so it's an indelible stamp, and she was a singular, uh, very savvy, very funny lady. And so, you know, last night we were all really deeply moved by the awareness of her spirit. We opened last night in San Diego at the Civic Theater where she had played in her second national tour uh, in 1995. And there's a poster of her with photographs and stuff, candids, around this poster of that tour right framed on the wall right next to my dressing room. So we were all, you know, really wistful last night. and. Um, all I could think about was her presence, and normally I try not to think about that to, so that I don't feel uh, daunted or, uh, you know, of course not to assess or judge my own work in the moment or compare myself to anybody because that's really uh, not conducive. But I started stumbling on lines in the first couple of scenes, my first scene um, in the opening and then my first scene with Horace Vandegelder. And I was like, I had to really get myself in hand and say, you know, focus, focus. Um, and then, you know, we dedicated our show last night to her, and then I gave a curtain spe speech at the end. But, you know, I spent the day yesterday watching some videos of hers and um, just remembering uh, the legacy in her body of work. Oh, I love the Pantages. It's so beautiful. Um, I actually, the last time I was there, I did this big photo shoot for my album, Ghost Light. They kindly let us use the theater. Uh, the album was called Ghost Light, and it was produced by T-Bone Burnett. And it's just such a beautiful space. You know, it's really inspiring. It's like a cathedral of theater there. 
Um, and um, I did a, a show there, the uh, music of the night, uh, uh, the music of Andrew Lloyd Webber, um, a tour that I was on some time ago. It was like th a three-month tour, so that was the last time I actually played that space. I did a, a, con a benefit concert for the Pantages in um, a party setting in the lobby for um, the Actors Fund. Yeah, I love that space. It's really inspiring, really beautiful. Um, so it'll be great. And I get to see all my friends in LA. I'm excited.